Hello, my name's Anita Howard. I'm one of the co-founders of ICE, which is a global community for corporate event planners. We're really pleased to be here today talking about lots of interesting things to do with the metaverse and lots of views. Um, the main purpose of ICE is basically to share knowledge. So we really do want you asking lots and lots of questions. And um, obviously at the end of the session, we will be sharing the details of our panel. So we are really lucky to be joined um, by Martin Fullard today, and I'm going to hand over to him in a few moments, who will then go on to introduce uh, the panel. Thank you again for joining us, and we love feedback, so please put it in the chat or give us a, um, put it in the Q&A as well. Anyway, over to you, Martin. Thank you very much, Anita, and hello and welcome to you all for today's Ice Q discussion. I said, my name is Martin Fullard. I'm the editor of Conference News Magazine and the editorial director at MASH Media. Now, nearly after two years since COVID-19 set in uh, about reshaping how we gather and we've all shifted to virtual events, it seems like we're now beginning to evolve once again. Businesses are beginning to discover and discuss in detail the metaverse as a potential destination for knowledge exchange and perhaps in the future even buying and selling but there is one question on our minds what the hell is it seriously it's such a fantastically big concept but it's actually quite difficult to understand so as is the way with these things we have put together a panel of experts who hopefully will get us off the ground and give us a bit of an insight and journey towards finding some coherent answers the question is is this a gimmick or is it really going to be the next step in our evolution i'm joined by karen callum benny and vanessa who i'm now going to ask to introduce themselves individually in a bit more detail karen perhaps we could start with you please tell our audience who you are what you do sure uh karen carter the official the the job title is um director of enterprise marketing for Europe here at Cvent, uh, been with the company just coming up on a year, and Cvent, for I'm sure all of you know, is an event technology platform that enables companies to create great, unique experiences, whether in person, virtually, or hybrid. So I'm really excited to have this conversation today. It's it should be a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Callum, would you please uh, introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, hello, everyone. My name's uh, Callum Gill. Uh, I'm Head of Insight and Innovation at uh, Creative Comms Agency, DRPG. Uh, currently, I'm working with at least four clients who are trying to get stuff off the ground in the metaverse at this moment in time. So hopefully I can uh, talk to you a little bit about what their approach is, whether or not it is actually real, uh, um, uh, how we can start to think about what we need to do now um and yeah talk maybe a little bit about the pitfalls as well um that people seem to be falling into regularly great thanks callum vanessa introduce yourself please hi everyone i'm vanessa lovett from glissa uh, we're a, a virtual and hybrid event platform that's either standalone or you can take elements and put them into your own websites as you see fit so working as well with agencies like callum said to help build those, those future events by taking different elements and pulling them all together. Um, before I joined Glissa, I was an event organiser. And so that was quite recent experience. I've used some of the existing uh, 3D, 2D worlds uh, and platforms that are out there. Uh, and I think I have a pretty good idea of some of the challenges that you guys are faced with at the moment. Good stuff. Challenges. We love challenges. Right? <laughs> and last but by no means least, Benny, please explain to our audience who you are and what you do. Hello, my name is Benjamin. Um, I'm from uh, uh, from Q Concept in uh, Nuremberg, Germany. Uh, we are a little company, and uh, our our aim is uh, to help our customers to get the first steps into uh, digital communication. Um, sometimes uh, in three D, sometimes in two D, but um, always um, focused on the needs um, from our customers. And yes, we do it on an individual base. Um, we are very product and solution focused. And yes, we have a, a big workflow in between and um, a lot of experience in uh, getting the customer into the first 3D steps, I would say. 
Very good. And Benny, we're going to stick with you, I think, because uh, you are the expert. We were talking before uh, we came on air earlier. Could you give us maybe an overview of where we are in the metaverse evolution? Because I think it's something we're all struggling to get our heads around. We, some people think it's this packaged, ready uh, item that you can just go out and buy and enjoy. But obviously, we're nowhere near that stage. Yes. Um, in the first step, I would explain in, in, in small words, what is the metaverse vision? Um, metaverse means how is it possible in the future, maybe in little steps right now, to start a conversation in the form of an avatar in a real-time 3D environment? So um, an, a, noble, a, a face-to-face -face communication in a 3D digital environment, um, and that's the, the vision of Metaverse. Um, but um, um, I think there are a lot of technical issues right now. Um, how is it possible to get it in, in a, broader, um, a broader customer um, experience? Because um, there are a lot of um, questions right now. Absolutely. I mean, how far away are we, do you think, from the metaverse being a, a mainstream reality, I guess? I, I think I think five to ten years, um, because um, right now we have no technical main solution, I would say. There is no um, feature where you can say, OK, this is the the accessibility for a metaverse for every generation right now. Absolutely. Uh, Karen, I know that when we were talking earlier on, you had some, uh, had some quite strong views as well. Do you think <laughs> that people are racing a little bit too far ahead of themselves at the moment, trying to get on the train, but really it's in no danger of leaving the station anytime soon? Well, I mean, I think to, to Benja's point, and, and even from if you if you watch uh, interviews with people like Zuckerberg, it's a five to 10 year down the road. The development and the processes required to build something like this are, are huge. Um, access to the technology that really makes that thing possible. You know, does everyone have the VR headsets? What's the cost and the implications? I think that there's a journey that we will all go on. And I think there's some really interesting things that will be able to be done as this technology develops. I mean, we think about if anyone wants to really geek out on things like Occam's razor, the speed with which these changes happen now are, are continue to get shorter and shorter. But when we think about the sea change that something like this 3D environment could create to really create that experience where people are engaging, uh, they're, they're buying things, they're, they're having conversations, is I, it seems a bit early to me. However, I think there are ways now that people can think about what can be done to bring innovation into that event experience, particularly in a virtual construct, bring some of those unique innovations to a real life experience as well, and start to understand and test a few things to learn as we go along. I know Vanessa was talking a bit about this um, as well. I mean, I was I was an event planner for quite a long time in, in my past as well before any of this existed. So it's fascinating to see now how you can bring these experiences to life without physically being in a room together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vanessa, you were uh, nodding, nodding your head there. Do you, want, uh, do you want to chime in and say your piece? Yeah, I, I feel that there's so much tech actually already out there that is a step towards this that um, is within reaching distance for many organizations already. And it's incredibly important for event planners to consider all of those steps towards whatever the final end result of the metaverse ultimately ends up being. And it's really important for event organizers to communicate that clearly upstream within your organization that these tests are taking place and that these pockets of experimentation are existing either already or soon to be existing in the business and that you are taking the business on this journey or your event business at least on the journey towards whatever the end um, meta metaverse looks like but the other thing for me is it has to be event goal driven 
Why are you doing the event in the first place? And therefore, what are the tools and tech that will help you achieve that result? And I'm very mindful for event organizers at the moment that they've got to be careful that um, they aren't being pressurized by the powers that be into doing the experimentation for the sake of doing it. It's not ultimately going to help them achieve their event goals. So it's always that you know upward management, I guess, of let's talk about what you want me to look at, why you want me to look at it. Here are the event goals. Here's where those two can align. And actually, here's where we maybe need to push things a little bit further down um, the road from what it currently feels like so that it doesn't end up being the buzzword running the sector, that it's still the sector striving towards whatever the metaverse ultimately ends up being. And I do think there is bags of potential in the future. It's just making sure that we take the approach correctly and yeah, don't get badgered into doing things faster than we perhaps should. Yes, well, everything seems to have raced past over the last couple of years. It always feels like the natural progression just to jump onto the next thing without having fully thought it through. But you mentioned event goals. Surely this has to be more than just the event goals. An event surely is part of a wider business objective or strategy. I mean, really, that's the sort of level you need to be thinking on. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the event in isolation of itself. That event is happening because it has been decided it is an important element to achieve the business's strategy so this needs this is a conversation that needs to happen with respect to our event planners at a at a senior level at the board level to understand where their business is going do mm-hmm. they need it yeah great point absolutely great point. uh callum so why don't you tell us obviously on we're not going to ask you to give up your client names but you've obviously got some experience in this at the moment and uh in terms of the back and forth with clients their expectations and perhaps what they think could you maybe just give us a bit of an overview of what you're what you're hearing and what you're experiencing at the moment so the, the guys on the on the panel have covered off quite a few elements which are really important to consider here you know the fact that um The metaverse as a concept in people's mind is very different to how it exists in reality. Uh, And you can basically plot on a graph as a brand, two factors, who you are as a brand and what you do and how you serve your customers or your own teams. And then along the bottom, who your customers and your own teams are. So what do they need and expect from you? And then if you find your line on that graph, you can see when about you should really be thinking about the metaverse as a concept. Now, if you're down at the bottom, like some of my clients are, if you're a gaming company, so some of the people that we're talking about here are Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard, Riot Games, or if you're a luxury brand like Gucci, uh, like luxury automotive, your point to be involved in the metaverse is far, far sooner than everyone else's because that's what your audience expects. And the biggest metaverse platforms that are in play at the moment are all gaming platforms. That's the reality of it. Millions of subscribers. And the reason why people maybe struggle to understand it is because they look at that as, you know, kid stuff or, you know, people playing computer games, you know. The average age of a computer game player is about 32 at this moment in time. They've got about an 80K a year salary. Um, They spend about 10% of their income in that space. Um, the people who are designing solutions in that space already are jumping on the next wave. So if you look, look at Gucci, for example, and Gucci X Roblox, so they're trying to engage in the metaverse with young people age 14 to 18, basically, in the metaverse environment today, so that in the future they are aligned with Gucci and Gucci's brand values. So we are imagining that there's going to be like some unified platform where everybody goes on, think Ready Player One, if anyone's seen that film, and it will never be that, ever. What there will be is some kind of zenith where you effectively get single sign-on to these platforms and you have one avatar that allows you access into these spaces. And, you know, it changes across platforms. And gaming has done this for years. You have a gamer tag on Xbox, an ID on PlayStation, all that kind of stuff. Just like having an email, you know, when you use single sign-on across different platforms, except this one will come with an avatar of how you look. And, you know, you will accumulate things across the platforms and you will move into these spaces. Why? Are you doing that for your event is the question. If it's just a case of you want something to look cool and flashy, you're going to spend a lot of money for people to walk around a virtual space without much output. If you've got a real strategic objective behind it or an imperative, so like with some of our clients who are in gaming, who who can't be afforded not to be in metaverse spaces now, then fine. Otherwise, to the point, to the point that we were, guys were talking about before the call started, a really interesting conversation there. Align your strategy first and understand whether or not your audience wants it. 
not just whether you want it because you heard Mark Zuckerberg say it. And by the way, Horizon is probably one of the worst and least developed mat metaverse platforms out there. They've just rebranded their company as Meta. So, you know, there's a there's a lot of exploration that needs to be done if you don't quite understand the terminology in play. And ask, you know, for a lot of people, ask your kids, ask younger people that you know that use Roblox, uh, you know, that play on Fortnite, because the biggest ever Metaverse event was Travis Scott's gig on for Fortnite. 27.9 million people watch that gig. It counts as an event, right? But so we've got to think about where it's going to sit, what we're going to do, how people are going to interact in these spaces. And if you don't know, ask some questions rather than definitely don't listen to Mark Zuckerberg. It's probably a good <laughs> I mean, the stats, the stats on, on e-gaming and people viewing it isn't more people are just sitting there watching people game than are even going to live sports anymore. So it's, it's very it's actually Also, the, uh, the watching concept is very much a sit back in your seat experience. But actually, a lot of the events that we are often talking about in this sort of environment is where you actually want people to lean in and interact. So you sort of sit forward, sit back. And I think that's something else to think about with the, as we move gradually on this journey, is how do you get people to sit forward more in their seats and engage and interact? And, it, and is that indeed the goal of what you're trying to achieve here? Or is it a sit back and enjoy experience? Because we are now exposed to much more of this uh, decision making, I think. It used to always be try and get people to sit forward. But actually, particularly when you start to look at internal corporate communication, sometimes that is a little bit more sit back and experience it and then maybe at some point you want them to get sit, them to sit forward so i think that's quite an interesting um uh, challenge to to think about as well as you start to go down the uh, options available mm. it does feel like history's taught us that when you try to replicate what is popular in society in a B2B context, it is often quite difficult to do. Mm. Uh, and I've always had a theory that, you know, social media platforms, when they all come out and they're shiny and new and everyone migrates over, they're enjoying it. And then all the corporations come along and work out how to monetize them and pushes all the users off onto the next one. And, you know, we see that happen all over the, all over the place. Uh, I mean, I don't, there's no way of possibly knowing, but I'm, just skeptical at this stage i guess that this will be something that will be widely used in a b2b context would anyone like to to challenge that thought i mean so i would say again this is about the moving parts right there's a lot of moving parts so um your example is perfect right martin so enterprise-led social and, you know, that integrating with, you know, ABM strategies and B2B environments that took to like 2017. That was like a decade after social media came out. So it's like it's a labored process to, to transpose these popular, easy, quick, effective things that work in society into this into this much more rigid landscape that, you know, we sometimes operate in working with corporates and especially planning events. But if you look at what's going to be valuable um, for in these arenas, you have to think use case every time. So if you look at Fortnite and if you look at these other, um, you know, gaming platforms, people are there to have fun, relax and escape in those magical gaming worlds, you know, you know, be be whatever you want, be a sorcerer, be a, be a space hero, whatever it is. That doesn't translate to an exhibition. That doesn't translate to the vast majority of events, as unless maybe it's like an engagement piece of the strategy. But training, development, product demonstration at scale across the globe instantaneously, um, bringing together people who couldn't be there in a meaningful way. So if you look at technology like Microsoft HoloLens and their holoportation concept, where you're literally bringing real people in, not Facebook Horizon style avatars, and I'm really not that against Facebook Horizon or bag bagging it that much, but that cartoonish element, you know, it doesn't really lend itself to the, what people want from that event experience. But holoportation, bringing people in that actually look like the real people, and all you have to do is wear a, a pair of um, uh, uh, mixed reality glasses. That's a different proposition. Then they've got their haptic technology coming along side it as well touch things at the same time that might be look virtual to you but are real in another space 
we've got to get you know we've got to get past the synesthesia problem haven't we where you know right now this is all great we can have a conversation but we're not in the room the energy isn't there we've got to get as close to as possible as that live experience as possible and we can only do that by interrogating use case i mean that's that's i mean that is my opinion but i think there's there's going to be a lot of failures in this space with people yeah. trying to do exactly what you've just described i would i mean i agree and even as so i I'm a marketer for an organization. So it's the, you know, obviously what we know the platform can do, but then how are we going to market that? So as, with my marketing hat on, I agree with you, Callum, it's what's the right use case. And I think to what Vanessa was saying, it's like, what are those steps that you can try? And whether that's a gamification of an experience within something that you're doing, where you get a chance to kind of roll around um, and, and creating that real experience. I don't want to be the, you know, I don't want to go into a thing where I have to become a sorcerer, a sorcerer, a sorcerer or whatever to go to this personal event because, and maybe this is where there's a little old school new scale. I, I'm excited to get back to in real life because I just want to see a human. How do we create that kind of a human experience and create something that is unique in that virtual world? So what are the things that can be done to test that now, as you describe? And, and learn from that to figure out what the investment needs to be and what that needs to look like for the future. And companies like Microsoft who leaned in heavily into thinking more around the, the B2B side of things and, and a lot of what they do with their tech. It's gonna be really interesting to see what they do with that. And, and other companies like people on this call. I think we need to, uh, it, it's, it's a daunting prospect because we're talking about something that is still you know years away from being something we can, accurately understand but you know i'm sure among our audience today we've got you know people you know in corporate event management positions who are being asked by people above them uh to go and explore the metaverse find out how it's going to work for us how we're going to make it i mean what what practical uh, advice can we give them today to feed back to their to their teams to their boards to their superiors on on a basic understanding of the metaverse, how do we articulate where we are now? And as an industry, what perhaps might be the benefits to look out for? I know it's a bit of a heavy question. Uh, and because Vanessa was the first one to laugh at it, she has the uh, responsibility to try and answer it. Uh, it is a heavy question. Um, and I think anyone who's on the call who nails this should share the answer with everybody because we'll all be very grateful. The question was hard enough to come up with, let alone the answer. <laughs> Um, I I think the this very much will depend on your business's strategy. Firstly, so it's got to be bespoke and tailored to that, as you said earlier, Martin. For, so keep that in mind throughout. But I do think it comes back to um, identifying and communicating up what is already available and how that could be uh, support to you guys achieving your strategy in the future. So you know, the sort of product that Benny already has that already exists and all of these products their, their goal and Benny, please correct me if i'm wrong here is to try and enhance that human experience online like that's the objective is ultimately that you can have a much much more engaging online human experience because that's ultimately it is online isn't it um so identifying what already exists how those items may help you on your journey forwards and which you feel would be the most um, beneficial to test and start to experiment with. I would probably also be trying to identify a testing and experimenting budget, to be honest. We talked briefly about budget before this. Some of this is hugely expensive, some of it isn't, but are you going to actually invest in identifying this journey on the way through? Or I don't think it's fair for event organizers to just be expected to get it right. As you said, Martin, we're gonna fall over a lot of times on the way through here. I think the use case point is vital. Um, you know, even looking inside one company, there will be certain things that are better suited to different sorts of tools and tech to support it. Um, before, when the pandemic hit, I was working with an automotive publishing house. It was all about car design and launching new car models. I think that's quite well suited to this sort of environment, actually. I think it, it, it works really well. They were, you know, the ma massive international car shows were cancelled at the beginning of 2020 and everyone went, holy smokes, what are we going to do? This was a really good place to start looking. Other events, maybe not so much. So um, I would identify what's there, communicate up how you see certain uh, aspects of those tool sets could help you, how, why, budget, 
Uh, and also which ones you're not so sure about. Like, I think it's OK to say, um, you know, this exists, but I, I don't see how it plays a role in our future at the moment. Doesn't mean that might not change in the future. I'll stop now and let some, some others answer. <laughs> uh, we've got some audience questions that I'd like to get out because I'm conscious of uh, conscious of time. But I guess really one of the, the key elements to add, I guess, to what you were saying, Vanessa, is that it really has to be a, a company wide decision. You know, what's your business's strategy here? You know, because if your strategy as a business is to embrace this tech, and I'm going to caveat that and saying, you know, we, we mentioned this in our pre chat that sustainability is very much going to be on everyone's agenda going forward. Now, there's no hiding away from that. Companies, particularly those list, publicly listed, are going to be under increasing pressure to demonstrate uh, green credentials and to reduce their impact. And that will inevitably impact how many people they send to events where they host their events so having a digital alternative uh, is going to be a necessity now of course that exists now in the context that we're all familiar with uh, but how that evolves will be will be very interesting uh, right we've got some questions and uh, I think well it's a real mix up here some really good ones here we go uh, I think Benny this one is absolutely for you from Robert Dunsmore uh, five years is a long time in tech, he says. Uh, what do you think will be the likely first metaverse touch point that the majority of us will experience? You, you could experience a metaverse touch point right now. Uh, that's not the problem. But um, it's the question um, which B2B company, which B2C company is in the metaverse right now. There are a lot of good metaverse platforms um, um, which are good in business, I would say. Um, but um, I think for the major majority of all companies, um, it's, it's a long way um, because they have to do their homework. Um, uh, communication is getting digital um, step by step and not with one step. And um, it's, a, it's a way. And I think uh, a lot of companies started this way right now but they aren't in a metaverse um, environment. Absolutely. Uh, and Benny, I'm going to aim this one at you again. Oh, someone else asked when it's moved it. Uh, Jen has asked, should we be using technology built on a gaming platform rather than a traditional event technology platform? I presume in the context of sort of getting us started. What do you think, Benny? It's a question about your target group. Um, um, and what, what's your aim uh, in, in, in the form of communication? Um, yes, gaming technology is future-based because you are ready for everything what's coming in the future. Um, you can implement with your 3D environment in, I would say, every technology in the future, um, which is getting to the market. Um, but um, also uh, an event platform um, has its uh, has its good sides and needs because if you want to go to a broad uh, customer base, it's good to use platforms um, from the market right now. Absolutely. Uh, where are we? Here's another one, uh, Karen. I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask you this one. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> now, I think it, it might just be an elaboration of, of what we were discussing earlier. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to get your view on it. Uh, how do you suggest we help our stakeholders understand and develop the infrastructure needed to prepare for the development into our event? So, again, I guess this is sort of asking, you know, look, this, the metaverse is beyond that of just the events department. You've got to have a far more holistic discussion about strategy with your yeah. board. Well, I mean, there's... There's a little bit, you know, I sometimes joke, is that is that in my pay grade sort of a thing? And the, and the complexities and the investments required for something like this should not be underestimated, as, as everyone on this panel can talk about and with the products and the consulting that they do. I mean, from a, from a, if a person is getting pressured by that, I think there's a level of, of information you can obviously gather from the from the internet and people that you can speak to that do this lord knows there's probably plenty of groups out there and people who can say look your investment in this could be at a minimum of x companies have spent this much is this and to build that infrastructure or to tap into the different platforms that are out there 
requires this amount of uh, so, you know, server space and things like that. So I think there's practical things that frankly need to come out of your IT or your operations department that shouldn't be an event person or a, a marketing marketer necessarily thinking about that. So, so I think it's really just taking a look at the available information and, and having those conversations perhaps with, with some of the experts to understand and then communicating that complexity can, can all, is probably a good way to go. And then in, in that world of how do we start that journey, um, as Vanessa was talking about, you know, like what are those points? Are there ways that you can find those pockets or just test those smaller things that you can get done for, let's say it's only 10,000 pounds versus a million pounds. I mean, it, it's a bit of that balancing act, but I think right now with the, the level of investment that's required, it's really going to take a lot of thinking on the part of, of leadership as to whether or not it's the right business direction to go to. Absolutely. Uh, Callum, there is a personal request, no less, uh, from, uh, from Ka- uh, where are we? From, from, our, from our fellow panelists. From Karen. me. Oh, right. Sorry. I didn't, I, I saw the question before I saw the name. Uh, but Karen would like to hear, I think we'd all like to hear more about the uh, the pitfalls. You uh, teased us earlier, so it'd be interesting to hear uh, hear about those. So some of them have been covered in a, in a certain sense by some of the panel already, as you can probably imagine. Um, and, you know, we've, we've seen some of these things happen in real life. I would say as a, as a general rule of some, don't proceed without research. I mean, I know I work in an insight team, but I'm talking about real research, not just gut feelings. I'm talking about surveying your audience, conducting real studies into the validity of these propositions to really assess use case, because if you don't have data to back up your investment, you're going to be in a, in serious trouble. Um, Vanessa talked about something which is vitally important in this space, and that's budgeting. Uh, I don't believe that these things should come out of singular event budgets. I think that an idea of a metaverse strategy should be budgeted for in isolation and then tagged onto every event that you do over the course of five or 10 years, because otherwise you're going to build something with a small fraction of a budget, which will not do you justice, which will not do the audience requirements any justice whatsoever. Whereas if you think actually, do you know what, I have a five year budget or a 10 year budget even for you know my metaverse interactions and every now and again, my event strategy is gonna link into that. You're in a much better position. Um, Benny was talking about something there, which I think is, you know, the, the kind of should we came from the should we be using gaming platform technology rather than, you know, using web-based stuff. And the reality is, from that research piece, you'll understand whether your audience have the capability to engage with something on that scale. So a unnamed client bought into right at the beginning of the kind of like, it, you know, the kind of verb of turning things virtual, a very, very high end high tech platform without proper investigation process and put it live and it crashed their business. It crashed all their computers. The pro- they weren't running gaming PCs. And that's what you've got to think, you know, were they looking at it through an Xbox, a PS5? Uh, were they, you know, did they have gaming engine chips in their, in their uh, work issued laptops or work issued phones? No, of course they didn't. So it's an absolute disaster. And if you want that, f- the fidelity of the experience that technologies like Unreal are pushing out there at the moment, you have to be able to understand that that's not, that's not feasible or accessible for a lot of the audience mm-hmm. right now. So your idea of the metaverse is going to be very different to the reality that is put up on, on the screen. And that goes alongside the technological side of it and the ubiquity of, um, uh, uh, of the technology people have to interact. Because you build something fantastic in the virtual world. Who's got a quest? Uh, you know, who's got an HTC Vive? Well, what, 4% of the audience? Everybody else is looking at it through their laptop screen. These are real things that people don't consider when they start having this conversation. Benny, I can see that you, that you wanted to add something there. Yes, but maybe it's a question about the right combination of functional technologies um, that are existing right now. So mm-hmm. maybe it's 3D in combination with a video call, maybe. Um, maybe it's... Uh, it's only to think about the right bridge to your customer, to your, to your goals, and um, combine it with existing things um, on the market in a broader range. And um, then I think you can, you can create really, really great experiences, customer journeys right now, 
um, without being in a metaverse vision, but um, near to near to that, I would say. Um, yes, Vanessa. Tiny, tiny practical consideration to add on to this. Um, if you are considering doing something like Benny has described there, which is a perfect, sensible step forwards, and you're thinking, I'm going to get this tech, the, the hardware, to a small group of people to test it out um, and have a, a small scale um, sample of this, please don't underestimate that the first time, second time, third time people use VR headsets is very, very uh, mind-blowing experience for them and keep it short. So that's a really practical takeaway, just small bite-sized chunks. You, you People have to really build up getting used to them because it is yeah, pretty mind-blowing the first time. So don't go in for a two-hour meeting in it. I would add just one more thing about the prep, like the pitfalls as well. And it's, uh, like, I mean, I don't know how many phrases, but a meta metaverse concern, because there's a perception and PR piece around this as well. And already at CES, the big technology uh, event, somebody set up an Instagram account documenting the most ridiculous uses of the term metaverse at the event, exposing the brands that have tried to align themselves with the concept and you know putting themselves out there in that space. And that's supposed to be a tech event, and there were still people there going, look, this is this is just ridiculous. So there's, a re there's a reputational risk here if you don't pitch it at the right stage. Uh, the right um level and Vanessa that point is so important like that there are there are people out there who cannot use virtual reality because it does make them incredibly sick the first time that they do it it's a learning curve so you're going to chuck them in there and effectively expect them to be tech experts if you send them you know a, a, an oculus quest in the post and they're opening it and figure okay now I've got to do what with this and yeah. um, you know it's it, it the ubiquity of that technology is super important otherwise you 90% of your audience on a 2D screen, you've lost most of the value of en engaging in the space anyway. Great stuff. Right, we're going to draw a line under it there. I suppose the last, there was one question there that we didn't get to, which is about education and training. Of course, it's all well and good developing a metaverse, but if your event staff aren't trained on how to use it on the event management course or whoever, another consideration to, uh, to bear in mind. But I'm sure that is a subject for another day so my sincere thanks to benny to karen to vanessa and to callum we could talk about this for ages genuinely fascinating i do hope everyone out there has found something useful uh we've got a long way to go before this becomes a reality but make sure you bring your entire company with you and let your bosses know it's their problem first thank you very much everybody